Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for our Bible study tonight. Thank you because of the privilege we always have when we gather together to learn from you. Lord, we're inviting you, the Holy Ghost, so that today you open our eyes to see wonderful, marvelous things from your watch in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, we're praying that you fulfill your promise to your own disciples that as you have gone up, exalted on high, you'll send the Holy Ghost to them. Therefore, Lord, we're waiting disciples today. And we're praying that you pour out the Holy Spirit upon every brother, every sister here tonight. In Jesus' name, we come with empty vessels. We come with clean vessels. And Lord, we're praying that that mighty power, that mighty unction, that mighty anointing, you pour upon every one of us in Jesus' name. All that the Spirit of God wants to do in every life and in the whole church, we're open to you. We give you the leeway, the green light, and we give you the permission. Do everything in Jesus' name. We pray that every hindrance in our lives, every hindrance in our fellowship, everything will be taken away. Your name will be glorified. Your power will be manifested. And the church will be revived. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. We're still in the study of the book of Joel. And now we're in Joel chapter 2. In Joel chapter 2, we've been looking at a series on the Holy Ghost. And we're looking at verses 28 and 29. Please open your Bible with me. In Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out of my spirit. I want you to understand that we've been in those two verses for quite some time now. The Lord must have a reason. There must be a purpose. Why the Lord makes us to stay on just those two verses of scripture. I've told you I need to tell you again that Joel's prophecy prophesied and predicted the outpouring and the infilling of the Holy Spirit upon all flesh. That prophecy was first fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. And Pentecost was a great turning point for the people of God in the New Testament. Actually, it was a real beginning of the fulfillment of uh, Joel's prophecy. However, there's something for you to understand. Many things that are promised, especially for the people of the New Testament, had a foretaste in the Old Testament. Let me give you just some examples. For example, the rapture of the church. Because it says, we shall not all sleep. We shall not be chained in a tweaking of an eye. The dead in Christ shall rise. And we which are alive will be caught up together with them ever to be with the Lord. That means will not taste death. But don't you remember that that promise, although looking to the future for the people of God, it was fulfilled in Enoch because he didn't see death. He was translated and he was with God that he should not see death. I but Elijah. He also had the fulfillment of that promise, especially given to the church. And when you think about Many of the promises that are specially made for the people of God in the New Testament, you'll find there was a foretaste of that promise, that prediction, and that prophecy in the Old Testament. The same thing with the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And I need to tell you that before Pentecost, that had been fulfilled on a very small number of people. These pre-Pentecost receivers... And had been filled with the Holy Spirit in order that they might carry out some specific special task to which the Lord had called them. And as we look at what we're studying today, as it says that, I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. And when that spirit is poured upon us, it's like you bringing a drum of water and then having some buckets now and then pouring, pouring water on those buckets until they are full. That means then there were people in the Old Testament that had the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And that happened before Pentecost in Deuteronomy chapter 34. Deuteronomy chapter 34, reading there from verse 9. 
and Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. You see that? And that's an Old Testament character. He had the spirit of God, the outpouring of the spirit until he was filled with the spirit of God, the spirit of wisdom. And Moses, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him as they did as, did, did as the Lord had commanded Moses. But he wasn't the only one in the Old Testament. Before Pentecost, that received the feeling, the outpouring, the fullness of the Spirit of God. If you turn to Micah chapter 3. An Old Testament prophet, Micah chapter 3. Looking at it in verse 8, you will see the same fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel on him. It says over there, but truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord, and of judgment, and of might, to declare unto Jacob his transgression, and to Israel his sin. Well, then you understand that as you read the prophecy of Joel, eh, there were people that eh, they were so eager. That although we know it's for the future, although we know the Lord actually wants to bless his own people and he wants to pour his spirit upon them, they were so eager that they reached forward and their hand of faith caught hold of the promise of the Lord and they were filled if it happened to them before Pentecost. For the people that uh, the promise was not even given directly to them. How about those of us who are living today? Shouldn't we be so eager? And shouldn't we pray until the outpouring is fulfilled upon us and we're filled, men and women, brothers and sisters, the whole church, filled with the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. Come on to Luke chapter 1. Although Luke chapter 1 is part of the record of the New Testament, but you understand that we're even talking about the time Jesus, before Jesus was born. Because in Luke chapter 1, Reading there in verse 15. Luke 1, 15. And he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. Uh, if you know Bible history, you know that John the Baptist was born before the Lord Jesus Christ. And the record here says he'll be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. That means before the coming of Christ. And that obviously means before Pentecost. So, there was the fulfillment of this promise of God even before Pentecost. Well, we're looking at that same chapter 1 of Luke, verse 41. In verse 41, and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe lived in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. There you are again. Christ was not born yet. And the Pentecost, real Pentecost, had not really come. But Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost in chapter 1 of, of Luke, verse 67. In verse 67, and his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and he prophesied. It's very clear then, from the word of God, that although the Pentecost experience had not been poured out upon everybody, there were a number of people in the Old Testament that were filled with the Holy Ghost and they had the power, that is spiritual power, supernatural power, to fulfill their assigned ministry. The power and the gifts of the Spirit were evident in their lives, signs, wonders, appropriate for their dispensation. They were done to confirm their calling and ministry. Actually, at Pentecost and after Pentecost, what was available to only a few people in the Old Testament is now made available for all believers. The feeling of the Spirit is no more limited to some few believers like in the Old Testament times, but is now available for all believers. I pray that you will not miss your chance in Jesus' name. As we look at the study today, we're looking at three points. Number one, powerful works through the Spirit before Pentecost. Powerful works of the Spirit, or through the Spirit, before the day of Pentecost. Number two, prophetic words, through the Spirit, before Pentecost. And number three, practical wisdom, from the Spirit, before Pentecost. Come back to number one. Powerful words, through the Spirit, before Pentecost. You need to understand that powerful works, signs and wonders, are always associated with the Holy Spirit, both in the Old Testament, and in the New Testament, 
we witness such powerful works of the Holy Ghost through men that were filled, controlled, under the unction. They were saturated by or with the Holy Spirit. These men and women were so filled with the Spirit of God that they were under the full control of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit could manifest himself and exercise his power through them without being limited or blocked by their natural limitations. And as you look at these uh, Old Testament characters, uh, you have to understand then that uh, although the Old Testament predicts and foreshadows that these are things that will come in the New Testament, but you have uh, the prediction being fulfilled and a shadow falling before the real person personality came, you have the fulfillment in the Old Testament. The Old Testament reveals the Spirit's role, function, ability in equipping and empowering God's people for special tasks of service. Uh, as you think about the people of the Old Testament, uh, you pick them up one by one, and you begin to see, as the Old Testament records, that they were full, they were filled, they were controlled by the Holy Ghost. Think about Moses, for example. Think of Joshua. Think of Othniel, or Gideon, or Jephthah, or Samson, or Ezekiel, or Jeremiah, or Elijah, or Elisha, and many others. These were filled with the Holy Ghost and supernaturally. They were enabled to perform special tasks in God's service. Usually the task was related to some kind of leadership role among the people. Look at the scriptures yourself. In Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11. Reading there from verse 17. And let's see what the Lord himself says. Concerning the, the witness, the testimony, the very fact that Moses was filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Lord wanted to take part of that spirit upon Moses and put upon uh, the leaders of the, uh, the people, uh, the, 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 the elders in Israel. In Numbers chapter 11, Numbers 11, verse 17. And I will come down and talk with thee there. And I will take of the spirit which is upon thee. I will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. Please understand, the Spirit of God, the power of God, the resources of God, and those things are not given uh, just for child's play. Just to say, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. I have the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost with me. It's for a special assignment and for a special task. That's why it says here, Moses, you cannot bear the body alone. And the body is too heavy for you. I'm going to have the spirit upon you. I'll put it upon these elders and leaders in Israel so that they can bear the body with me. Well, any lesson there. Although the body may be great, although the task may be enormous, although it may appear that one man cannot carry out the work, but as great, as enormous, as the task may be, the Lord can only share that task with the people that have the same spirit, the same power, the same unction, the same anointing on them. And you know, sometimes there are, there are times in the church when you think, well, the task is too great. The assignment is too great. Why don't we just collect people? Don't, don't let's wait until everybody has, you know, all the qualifications. If we wait until everybody has all the qualifications, the work will not be done. Let's just manage whatever we have. No, we don't manage whatever we have. And the thing was so great that Moses was even uh, like complaining, saying, I cannot bear the burden alone. How can I do this? Uh, and the weight of the responsibility was like crushing him. But God said, I'll get some people to help you. Bear the burden with you. Only one condition. I'm going to take that same spirit upon you. And I'm going to put upon them so that they can bear the burden with you. Verse 25. And the Lord came down in a cloud and he spake unto him. And he took up the spirit that was upon him. Not a different spirit. Not a different spirit. You know, you cannot really bear the burden with the leader. If you have a different spirit, a different agenda, a different attitude a different vision, a different kind of leading. If you are going to bear the burden of the leader that God has chosen, whether in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, you need the same spirit. You need the same attitude. You need the same understanding. You need the same vision. That's why God said, he came to the people and said, 
Now I'm going to do this. I, I, I'm talking to you there. You have a vision. You have a desire. You want to get the work done. And you are praying privately in your own closet, in your family. And you are sharing with your wife. You are sharing with your husband. Hey, this work is too great for one man. This work is too great for just hey, no matter how full of the Holy Ghost that man may be. This work is too great for him. It's like I, I want to take part in this work. It's like I want to help in this work. Wonderful brother, wonderful sister. That's a good idea. But if you are going to take part in the work, the same vision... The same conviction, the same anointing, the same unction, the same infilling of the Holy Ghost, the same direction in which we are walking. In verse 25, and the Lord came down in a cloud, and he spake unto him, and took of the spirit that was upon him, and he gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. Then you know that uh, you know Joshua came and said, uh, Eldad and Medad, they prophesy in the camp. Uh, they are not even here in the tabernacle with us. Why don't you stop them? In verse 29, And Moses said unto him, And beest thou for my sake, Would God, this is my prayer, this is my desire, Would God, that all the Lord's people were prophets, And the Lord will put his spirit upon them. That means upon them all. And you see then that very clearly uh, there were people that had the powerful manifestation of the Spirit of the Lord in the Old Testament. Uh, you know about Moses already. Uh, have you met him when he, when he met um, Pharaoh? Uh, have you seen him when he brought all those plagues upon the land of Egypt? Have you seen him when he stretched out the rod and the sea parted in two? Have you seen him when he prayed and the manna came? Have you seen him when he, he, he gave them the law? Have you seen him bold? authoritative, courageous, and the miracle power of God walking in his life is because of the infilling, outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon his life. And in, in Deuteronomy chapter 34, Deuteronomy 34, I'm reading from verse 9 again. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. Wait a minute, Joshua. Filled with the spirit of wisdom. Joshua, why do you think you ought to be filled with the spirit of wisdom? And Joshua tell, yes, I know why. I know why. Nobody can continue the work that Moses started in the spirit. Nobody can continue that work in the flesh. Because he took the fullness of the power of the spirit of God. He took the anointing. He took the unction. He took the empowering, enablement of the Holy Spirit upon Moses before he started the work. And Joshua, uh, you are stepping into big shoes if you are taking over uh, the work of Moses. Joshua, you, 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 are, you, are you are stepping into deep waters if you are taking over the work of Moses. And the work of Moses could have continued. You are Joshua, you are now stepping in. You need that same spirit of Moses. On Moses. In Moses. You need that same spirit upon you. And Joshua... How are you going to be able to get the spirit? And Joshua said, I know how. I know how. You know, tell me, Joshua, I'm going to be so close to Moses that if he stretches his hand like this, his hand must touch me. I'll be so close. I'll be so near. Not only to see, not only to feel, but I'm going to experience that same power upon Moses. I'm telling you that if God is going to call you and if God is going to use you to carry out any kind of work that God has raised up from another man. God is going to have to put that same spirit upon you, that same vision in you, that same conviction in you. Ah, now you understand why. Why some great, great churches begin. And then uh, the next leader that follows, you know, he just hears the word. It's not near enough for the power and the hand of the founder of the leader, of the original leader to touch him, lay, to be laid on him, he thinks he knows the theory of the word already. He thinks he knows the history of their church already. And then the first leader, the founder passes away, and nobody has the unction and the power and the spirit and the fullness of the spirit of wisdom that was on that first leader. And the next one just carries on Historically, mechanically, and the thing really doesn't make it. 
that's the reason why anywhere you find anywhere you find Moses, Joshua was very near. Very, very near. So that as Moses stretched forth his hand like this, his hand will touch Joshua. And then deliberately, now Moses laid hands on him, passed on the spirit, passed on the assignment. You cannot pass on the assignment without passing on the spirit. It will not work. That's why it says in verse 9, And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses, and there arose not a prophet since in, the, in Israel, uh, like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face in all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh. And to all, all his servants, and to all the land, in all that mighty hand, and in all that great terror, which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. And well, we thank God because that man Moses, he had the spirit of God. But he was not the only one in the Old Testament that had the infilling, outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon them. And we're looking at Second Kings, Second Kings chapter 2. And we read about two people there in verse 9. Elijah and Elisha. Elijah had the Spirit of God, no doubt. And mighty works, powerful works of the Spirit were done through both of them, Elijah and Elisha. In verse 9, Second Kings chapter 2. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Uh, 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 you are hearing a man that had a desire. He said, uh -uh. are you asking me that kind of question? What am I going to ask from you before you be taken away from me? Didn't the Lord tell you that you are to appoint me a prophet in your place? Oh yes, the Lord did. But you know, Elisha, you cannot have that assignment. Nobody can carry on the work started by Elijah without having the power and the spirit and the unction and the anointing that Elijah had. Thank God Elisha realized. He said, I'm following this man. This man, Elijah, that said, according to my word, there shall be no dew, no rain. All these days, but according to my word, and God sealed up heaven. We're talking about a man that had the power of the spirit of God upon him. That when he came to that widow and he said, give me drink. And a fellow was going to bring the cup of water. And before you come, bring a muscle in your hand. And a woman said, there is nothing. I'm just preparing this so that I will eat. And then Elijah said, according to the word of the Lord. That cruise of oil will not fail. And the meal will not fail until the Lord brings uh, rain in the land. And it was so. We're talking about Elijah, a man that had some, so much power of the spirit of God. When the son of that, uh, of that woman died, Elijah went in because of the power of the Holy Ghost upon his life. That boy was raised from the dead. We're talking about Elijah that came to the people and then said, Obadiah, go and tell your master Ahab that I'm going to appear before him today. And Obadiah said, what have I done? That I'm going to lose my life because as soon as I'm gone away, then the Holy Spirit will take you to a place I cannot, I cannot find you. He said, no, I'm going to show myself to him. And then he showed himself to him. He said, gather the people together and challenge one man against millions of people. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about powerful works, mighty works of the Holy Ghost. One man against the whole nation. Why hold you between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. If Baal, then worship him. And the people answered him not a word. He said, am I not the single prophet here? And you have the prophets of Baal. Let them take a sacrifice if they want. And then let them, let them cut it and put it on the wood. But no fire there. Let them call their God. The God that brings fire, that will be the God they said you have said well. And those people shouted and prayed and jumped and cut themselves. And there was no result then at the time of the evening sacrifice. We're talking about the Elijah that said, come near unto me everybody. And he repaired the altar of the Lord. And then he looked up to heaven and he said, God, let these people know that I've 
done everything according to your word and the fire fell down and the people said the lord is god the lord is god i'm talking about elijah single-handedly he dealt with all the 450 prophets of baal and you're talking about elijah that when the king said go and take him he just sat on the mountain he said you come to take me, you captain with your fifty. You say I'm a man of God. If I'm a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. That's the kind of Elijah we're talking about. And now he was going away. And then Elisha was to take his place. And Elisha knew, and you must know, if you are going to take the place of Elijah, if you are going to do the work of Elijah, you must have the spirit, the vision, the conviction, the same power with Elijah, with that Elijah had. That's why he said, I pray that the double portion of your spirit will be upon me. And then he said, that's good. If you see me, when I be taken away, it will be so. But if you don't see me, it will not be so. And thank God, Elijah, yes, he had a purpose. My question to you is, as you come to church every Sunday, Come to church every Monday. Do you have a goal? Do you have a purpose? Do you have a vision? Do you have a destination? Do you have something you want to do? Do you have a calling? Do you have an assignment? Is there something you want to do? And you realize like Elisha, without the power of the Lord upon you, without the Spirit upon you, you cannot do it. And then Elijah said, well, if you are not too familiar, if you, don't, if you are paying attention, if you are not looking here and there, if you concentrate that when I'm taking up, you will see me, it will be so. And then they went on talking. And the chariot came and took Elijah away. And Elijah saw him. And he said, my father, my father, and the chariot of Israel, and the mantle dropped. And he removed his own clothes, the clothes of weakness, the clothes that he had been familiar with, the clothes that he was wearing, threw that away, took the mantle of Elijah, went back to Jordan, and he smote that river, saying, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And the water, the river, parted into. And the people testified that the spirit of Elijah had come upon Elijah. And we know it came because it is that same Elisha. Immediately the people came and they said, You see the condition of the city, that the water is causing death. They said, Bring a salt. And then eventually threw it in, and the water was healed, and there was no death anymore. This is the man, Elisha, that, you know, as the, the bears came and destroyed those, those people that were really clean, the, the rapture, the, the rapture of, uh, of Elijah. Go up, go up, bald headed man. And he said, why are you talking like that? That's blasphemy. And he brought the power of God to bear upon them in judgment. We're talking about a man that uh, this fellow, uh, that is Elijah. Uh, you, you know the oil that was multiplied? You know the Shunammite son that was raised from the dead? And you know that when they were eating, there is death in the pot. There is death in the pot. And he healed that and there was no more problem. You know the story of Naaman, who was a captain of the Syrian army, who had been uh, you know, a leper, and said, go and dip yourself in Jordan seven times and your flesh will come back. Many, many things that Elisha did actually he had a double portion of the spirit and the might of the spirit of god on elijah and that's, that's what the lord is expecting today that you too you will have this power upon you we're talking about powerful walls through the holy spirit before the day of pentecost I, I want to remind you of something before i move on in judges chapter 13 judges chapter 13 i'm reading verse 24 and verse 25 and the woman bear a son and called his name Samson, and the child grew, and the Lord blessed him, and the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtaol. And that's another person in the Old Testament. He had enough power, enough authority, enablement of the Holy Ghost upon his life to do what the Lord had appointed him to do. In chapter 14, verses 5 and 6, then went Samson, down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath and behold a young lion roared against him and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and he rent and he tore him he tore the lion as he would have rent he would have torn a kid and he had nothing in his hand 
But he told not his father nor or his mother what he had done. And that's the power of the Holy Ghost upon him to carry out the assignment the Lord had given him to destroy the Philistines who were enemies to the children of Israel. We're told in uh, chapter 15 of Judges from verse 14. And when he came to Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire. And his bands loose from off his hands. And he found a new job bone of an ass. And he put his hand and he took it and slew a thousand men therewith. And something said, was well, the job bone of an ass. Heaves upon heaves, and a job with well, the jawbone of an ass have slain a thousand men. I want you to understand, please, that uh, the Holy Ghost coming upon the children of Israel at that a few of them selected leaders in their various generations, they needed to be holy because actually uh, you need salvation first, after that, sanctification, and after that, the Holy Ghost baptism. Before you cannot be in feeling of the Holy Ghost, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, you must be saved. That's why Jesus Christ said to his own disciples, The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Those who are not born again, they cannot receive. Because it, it sees him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him because he is with you and shall be in you. That's why Ezekiel said, I will pour upon you clean waters. Sprinkle upon you clean waters, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness will I cleanse you. And he will make you clean from all your idols. Not salvation. In the very next verse it says, And I'll put a new spirit within you. And I'll take the stony heart out of your flesh, and give you the heart of flesh. That's sanctification. And then it says after that, And I will put my spirit upon you, and make you to walk in my statutes. That's only God's baptism for salvation. And second, sanctification. And then third, you have the Holy Ghost baptism. And if the power is going to remain in our lives, we must remain holy for the Holy Spirit to continue abiding in us. Hey, look at this uh, young man, uh, Samson. He had the Spirit of God upon him, but he became careless. And he thought that it's automatic that, after all, uh, the Spirit of God had been upon me, even from birth. But he made a serious, grave terrible mistake. In, um, in Judges chapter 16, he went to pull around with Delilah and uh, see the consequence and in verse 20 and she said, Philistine, the Philistines are upon this something. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before. And then he said, and I will shake myself. And he knew not, he wished not that the Lord had departed from him. You see, if we are careless, uh, the Lord can depart from us and the power of the Holy Ghost that we had before, we can lose everything. But you've seen number one, powerful works through the Spirit before Pentecost. Point number two, prophetic words through the Spirit before Pentecost. You see, uh, the, if, you, if you want to really have uh, the prophetic word, powerful words, that you speak like this and heaven will confirm it. You know what you need? You need the feeling, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon your life. In Second Peter, Second Peter chapter 2, reading chapter 1 rather, Second Peter chapter 1, reading in verse 20 and verse 21, knowing, the prof knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. He's talking about Old Testament people that wrote from Genesis to Malachi, all those prophets of God, all those men of God, holy men of God, not sinful men, not wicked men, not backsliding men, not dirty men, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Uh, can we see some of them? Oh yes, we can. In Second Chronicles, chapter 20. Second Chronicles, chapter 20. Reading there from verse 14. Jehoshaphat had a great problem on his son. That's a great battle. He didn't know what he would do. He began to pray. He began to call upon the Lord. Then we're told in verse 14, Second Chronicles 20. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, 
the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Esau, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. You know, it happened in the Old Testament that those people had the spirit of the Lord upon them. And then he said, he said, Hacking ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, thou king Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord unto you, be not afraid, nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And when, when you have a problem, and you have the Spirit of God upon you, the Spirit of God, He'll comfort you, He'll give you courage, He'll show you that the problem on your hand is not yours, it's a problem that the Lord Almighty God Himself, that He will take over, that He will solve. In Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel chapter 2. Reading there from verse 1. And you'll see that this man of God too, he had the spirit of God upon him. And it was because of the influence of that spirit, because of the power of that spirit, because of the instruction and revelation of that spirit upon him that he was able to speak the word of the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 2, reading from verse 1. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the spirit entered into me. What a wonderful thing, uh, those of us who are preachers. If you will have time with the Lord, and before you come to teach, and before you come to preach, and become, before you come to declare the word of God, before you even open the Bible to, to have anything of interpretation, of preaching, application of the word of God, if the Holy Spirit on you will enter into you again. And that's what he did to Ezekiel, and it says over, it says over here, the Spirit entered into me. Obviously, that's not his human spirit because his human spirit was with him all the time. The body without the spirit is dead, but was still alive. And it was not an evil spirit. The spirit of the Lord entered into me. And when it says, when he spake unto me and he set me upon my feet. And I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel. Before you can be sent to the people to go and speak to them. You know, appointing somebody to just say, you know, be over that district. Be over that nation. Be over that state. Oh, it should, it should be filled with the Spirit of God. Because it was when the Spirit of God entered into him. And was filled with the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God put the word in his mouth. That's when the Lord could say, I'm sending you to the people. Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 5. Ezekiel 11, I'm reading there from verse 5. There it says, And the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me, came upon me, and said unto me, Speak, thus says the Lord. Thus have ye said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. And that's what happens. You know, if we have the Spirit of God, if we have the Spirit of God, we'll not be preaching from here say. So and so told me. So and so said. Or just from what we know about the people. While you are speaking, when the Spirit of God is upon you, the prophetic word, the prophetic utterance, and the prophetic declaration will be coming out through you. Of course, the people in the congregation that do not understand, and they do not know that it is the Lord speaking, they may have a kind of a different view. They might think, oh yes, somebody has gone to tell him something. That's why he's saying what he's saying. Never mind that one. The important thing is that when you have the Spirit of God, and you're full of the Spirit of God, you open your mouth like this, you'll be declaring, thus says the Lord. And there's something beautiful about the ministry of Ezekiel. Uh, look at this, Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 26 and 27. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, and shalt not be unto them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. And when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus says the Lord, he that heareth, let him hear. He that forbeareth, let him forbear. You see that? Uh, the Lord said, Ezekiel, we're going to have a deal. We're going to have an arrangement. My spirit is so much upon you that you cannot waste your word. You cannot just say anything, anytime to anybody. Although I've appointed you a watchman, 
over the house of Israel. But you will not talk every time. I'm going to seal up your mouth. And only when the spirit of all the, the almighty God comes upon you, I will open your mouth. Only at that time you'll tell them, Thus says the Lord. What a wonderful ministry that will be today. If we have the spirit of God upon us so much. And whatever is happening, whatever people do, however people act, if we just seal up, if the Lord just seals up our mouth until the Lord is ready to say anything unto them. And when the Lord is ready to say anything unto them, he opens our mouth, he pours the spirit upon us afresh. And then we're able to speak in the power, in the anointing, in the unction of the Holy Ghost. Come to Luke chapter 1. We're looking at the prophetic word before the, uh, by the Spirit or through the Spirit before Pentecost. When the Spirit of God came upon anyone in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament, the thing that happened is they opened their mouth and they prophesied and they spoke the word. They declared the word, the mind of the Lord. We're looking at Luke chapter 1 verse 41. Luke 1 verse 41. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe lived in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Look at what follows. And she spoke. Out of it, uh, she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord shall come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of the salutation sounded in my ears, the babe lived in my womb for joy. Blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. You see here, when the Spirit came upon her, when she was filled with the Holy Ghost, then powerful words, prophetic words came out of her. What she didn't know, what she couldn't know naturally, she knew in a supernatural way. What I'm saying is, when you have the Spirit of God, not just ordinary words, not just, uh, you know, the words being spoken by everybody. Not gossip, of course. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you will not allow, you will not allow all those other kinds of conversation to mix up with your kind of conversation. Because uh, you, you are carrying precious, precious ointment. It is in Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 67. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, you do see this? When the Holy Ghost came in the fullness of anointing and power, it brought out prophetic words. What did he say? Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he has visited and redeemed his people. And he has raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And he spake as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that it, we shall be delivered, we shall be saved from our enemies. And from the hand of all that hate us. And to perform the mercy promised to our fathers. And to remember his holy covenant, the oath which is where to our father Abraham. That he will grant us that we've been delivered out of the hands of our enemies. Might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. Very clear then. When, Je when Joel predicted. That there will be the outpouring of the Spirit upon all believers. He said the immediate outcome, immediate consequence of that outpouring of the Spirit will be that your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. The vision is talking about is uh, like, you know, the vision of seeing your rich places. It's like when Paul at night was sleeping. And then the Lord showed him a vision of the night and said, Paul, don't be afraid. For I have many people in this place, and no man shall set thee hurt. It's like when Paul the Apostle was considering, where do we go? Preach the gospel here, preach the gospel there. And then a vision of the night appeared to him. And a man of Macedonia said, come over to Macedonia and help us. And we gathered assuredly that the Lord was calling us unto Macedonia to go and declare unto them the salvation of the Lord. That's the vision we're talking about. Prophesying. Or proclaiming God's mind to God's people is declaring God's revealed will, the revealed word, so that the people will be able to know what the Lord wanted them to do, what the Lord wanted them to be. So then we understand that from the very first to the last prophet 
of the Old Testament, each of them was filled with the Holy Ghost, and each of them received the Spirit's revelation to speak the might of God unto the people. But then, as we come to the New Testament, you have a lot of people now because the promise is not made available for everyone. The promise is unto you and to your children and to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I pray that the Lord will fulfill the promise even in your life, in your ministry, in Jesus' name. We come to point number three. Practical wisdom from the Spirit before Pentecost. Seen uh, in the Old Testament before the day of Pentecost. The people and the Spirit of God and it gave them practical wisdom. Well, many people think that only preachers are to have the Holy Ghost upon them. Not really. Any assignment that God gives you is beyond you. It's greater than you. And therefore you need the power, the anointing of the Holy Ghost to be able to carry it out. In Exodus chapter 28. Exodus chapter 28. Reading there from verse 3. And I shall speak unto all that are wise hearted. Whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. He said, the Lord said, Moses... I feel some of these people with the spirit of wisdom that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Do you see that? That was an assignment they had in Israel and they needed the feeling of the Holy Ghost that is the spirit of wisdom upon them so that they will be able to carry out the special assignment that the Lord had for them. Whatever assignment you have in the house of God uh, you can't say, well, this one doesn't need the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Every assignment that we need to do in the house of God, in this New, New Testament dispensation and age, will need the Holy Ghost in feeling. Don't you remember that in the New Testament, all they were asking for at that time, when the church began to multiply, is that they will choose seven men, and these seven men, all that they will do will be to distribute food to the widows, and, uh, you know, that's what you're called. That's not preaching. But then, you see the qualification they gave. They said, look here out from among you seven men. Of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Do you see that? It's not only for preachers. Anything you're doing in the house of the Lord, in this New Testament dispensation, you need the Spirit of God. And you need the infilling of the Holy Ghost upon your life. In Exodus chapter 31. Exodus 31. Looking at verse 3. And I have filled him with the spirit of God. And in wisdom. And in understanding. And in knowledge. And in all manner of workmanship. Again, that wasn't preaching. But uh, the Lord uh, filled him with the spirit of the living God. And, and then he had the wisdom. If you are going to help. The work of the Lord in any way. Just like those Old Testament people had the Spirit of God upon them. And they were able to manifest the wisdom. The same thing the Lord is requesting, demanding today. In Second Samuel chapter 14. Second Samuel chapter 14. Reading from verse 18. Here it says, Then the king answered and said unto the woman, Hide not from me, I pray thee. The thing that I shall ask thee. And the woman said, Let my lord the king now speak. And the king said, Is not the hand of Joab with thee in all this? And the woman answered and said, As, the, as, the, as thy soul liveth, my lord the king, none can turn to the right hand or to the left from aught that my lord the king has spoken. For thy servant Joab, he bade me, and put all these words in my mouth, in the mouth of thy, of thy handmaid, to fetch about this form of speech, as thy servant Job done this sin. And my Lord is wise, this is the point, my Lord David is wise, according to the wisdom of an angel of God, and knoweth all things that are in the earth. You see, what if you are going to have the people of God, many people will come, many characters will come, but you need this wisdom of the Spirit. This woman testified and said, we cannot deceive you, we cannot hide anything from you, because you have the wisdom of an angel of God. In Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 15, 
Luke 1, 15. It says, And it shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and it shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and it shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the, to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. So make ready a people prepared for the Lord. The Lord is challenging us today that this is the time of the outpouring of the Spirit of God. If the Old Testament people, if they were able to receive the fullness of the Spirit in their own time, to be able to do everything the Lord wanted them to do, and they were filled with the Spirit of wisdom, how much more today we need the supernatural wisdom of God, higher and greater than natural wisdom, so that we'll be able to do everything the Lord wants us to do. Suppose you were living in the time of Joseph, would you have been able to get the, the feeling of the Holy Spirit upon your life so that you can do that special thing that nobody else could do except Joseph? Suppose you were in Babylon at the time of Daniel, would you have been able to volunteer yourself before God and say, Lord, I'll be your witness here. I want your spirit. I forget every other thing. Fill me with the Holy Ghost and the spirit of wisdom that even the pagan king and the pagan queen will be able to testify about me. Suppose so at the time of Elijah and Elisha or at the time of John the Baptist. Here is your own chance now that you'll be able to turn the hearts of many people unto the Lord. There are sinners there perishing. And there are people that do not know the way of salvation. And you are there, you are born again. Maybe you are sanctified. And the Lord is saying, let me fill you with my spirit and with my wisdom. So that the assignment I have for you, you can carry it out. I believe you'll offer yourself to the Lord. I said you'll offer yourself to the Lord. And the Lord is saying, hey, the anointing is available today. The unction is available today. The infilling, the power, the enablement of the Holy Ghost is available today. And it is for you. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. Don't you want to be a witness of the Lord in this city, in this state, in this country, and maybe in nations beyond? You'll be my witnesses both in Jerusalem, Judea, in Samaria, unto the uttermost part of the earth. You are asking, can you receive the power today? If you are saved, if you are sanctified, is the, is the feeling available for you today? Oh yes, it's available because the promise is unto you. And to your children. And to all that are far off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The Lord has called you. And he wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Come to the Lord. He'll fill you to overflowing. Rise up. Tell the Lord. Oh yes Lord I'm available. You've given me assignment to the house of God. It cannot be done with extraordinary power. Extraordinary wisdom. Without the filling of the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. If you are not saved, tell him to save you. If you are saved and not sanctified, and the blood of Jesus can cleanse you from all sin, tell him to sanctify you. If you are saved and sanctified, tell him to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is there. The Holy Ghost is there. Open to the Lord now. He wants to fill you. 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 Bring your vessels not a few. And tell the Lord, Lord, I'm available. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. He will do it and you'll do extraordinary things for the Lord even in this generation.